We should be too big to take offense and too noble to give it. Abraham Lincoln This quote by Abraham Lincoln is a reminder to be kind, understanding, and compassionate to those around us, no matter how they may act or treat us. I know it's much easier for me to tell you to stop taking things so personally, than it is to actually stop taking things so personally. Still, there are ways to thicken your skin, and enjoy life with more happiness, and less contention and hurt feelings. Welcome to Genius. In this video, I am going to tell you 10 smart ways to respond when you're offended. 1. Talk yourself out of being offended. When you find yourself getting frustrated, try to step back and ask yourself, what's the big deal? Does this really matter? Am I taking this the wrong way? Remind yourself that it can be as simple as understanding what the other person is trying to say. Try to reason with yourself and ask, did he really mean it to hurt me? By taking a minute to think, you may find that the issue at hand isn't really as serious as you initially thought. Talk yourself out of the offense by telling yourself, this person is simply expressing his opinion, and listen to how interesting it is. I find it so fascinating that someone can have such opinions that are almost the exact opposite of mine. You will be happier as you learn to talk yourself out of offense and internalize the sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me philosophy of communication. 2. Put yourself in the offender's shoes. This will have the added benefit of being less offensive to others as you learn to be too noble to give offense. In any event, if you can slide your feet into their moccasins for a minute, you can learn to see things from the offender's perspective. And then, just maybe, you will see that you too played a role in the drama. And perhaps you will also come to see that the offender had no such intentions of offending. 3. Assume a benevolent motive. Unless proven otherwise, you don't want to become someone's dupe. Assume the person in question has noble intent. Maybe the language was clumsy, maybe even ill-advised, but assume a good heart. That should take the sting out of the bite and put some happiness back in your day. So don't hold on to the words people use to get at the thing they are trying to express. Hear the idea and ignore the clumsiness of the expression. 4. Practice detachment. Many people are easily offended because they can't emotionally differentiate between their thoughts and their inner sense of self. When identities are too closely tied to one's opinions and those opinions are then disagreed with, many feel like they, themselves, have been rejected, the core of who they are have been shoved away, pushed to a corner and crushed. This, of course, hurts, but is highly inaccurate. To overcome hypersensitivity, realize that your opinions are not you. And certainly, any given opinion or set of opinions are not the whole of who you are. To the degree you can detach your ideas from your identity, you will live a happy, fulfilling life with little opportunity to feel offended. 5. Learn humility. A well-known person once said that whenever he hears that he has offended someone, his first response is to stop and think if, in fact, he may have said or done something that could have given the impression of an offense. That, by itself, is a great attitude of humility that would make him almost immune to offense. But he didn't stop there. He went on to say that he often found that he had indeed said something that could have been construed as offensive. He would then seek out the offended person and apologize for the misconstrued word or deed. Humility is the friend of inner peace and equanimity. And peace and equanimity are the friends of happiness. 6. Love truth more than being right. If the truth, whoever possesses it, is more valued than the perception that you are the one who knew it first, then opposition to your thoughts and beliefs will be inoffensive no matter how offensive the other person is trying to be. You are not emotionally attached to your position. You only hunger after truth. So opposition to your point of view offers no grounds for offense. You simply want to know the truth, even if you are never the place it originates. 7. Overcome self-centeredness. The it's all about me mentality is fertile soil for being frequently offended. Every word out of every mouth, every action or inaction, all that is done or undone, all motives and intentions become a reflection on you. That is a huge burden to carry. If everything is reduced to how it affects you, if you reside at the center of everything, no wonder you are so frequently offended. Move away from the center of everyone else's life. You likely aren't really there anyway. Nor should you be, in most cases. Allow most of life to be indifferent to you. My bad mood isn't about you. Your mom's neglect isn't even about you either. It's about her. This way, less in life will offend you and happiness will be much less fleeting too. Besides, they're entitled to their opinion. So let them have it, cheerfully. 8. Reserve judgment. Finish the discussion. 
let the talk continue to its natural end. So often we jump to conclusions, assume an ill intent, create meaning to a word that then hurts and offends. Resist that urge and delay judgment until the conversation has run its course. You just may find there is no offense to be had by the time you get to the end. 9. Accept imperfection. If you expect others to act and speak a certain way, or assume others will be as kind or compassionate as you, if you're offended when they don't rise to the level of your expectation, you will almost always be offended or on the verge of it. Instead, allow people to be human. They are, after all. We all have foibles, idiosyncrasies and personality and character flaws. So do you. Yours just may be different than theirs. So just let it be, shrug and let it slide off your back. Don't hold on to the imperfections of others so tightly that you strangle yourself in the process. Release, let go, breathe, relax. Remember, people are imperfect. You are imperfect. Life is imperfect. And that's just plain A-OK. -okay. When you can accept their imperfection and your own, you will be well on your way to a life of more emotional stability and happiness. 10. Accept yourself. Learn and grow and improve, of course. But accept where you are along that path. You could hardly be anywhere else, given circumstances, after all. So accept yourself deep inside. Validate your inner being. See yourself as more than your behavior. You are also your potential. This self-acceptance will declaw others' ability to offend you. It won't hurt because your validation doesn't come from their opinions about you. It comes from within, or from above. People who are internally fragile no matter how tough, their exterior break most easily at the wrong or misplaced word or deed. So grow your inner self, become self-accepting, and life will be a more consistently happy place to live. If you enjoyed today's video please give us a like. To ensure that you never miss a new upload, click the bell icon. And yes, don't forget to subscribe.